job, everybody. Great job. Thanks for singing out. Now, uh, today, it's not Pastor Jeff. It's not me. It's not Pastor Caleb. But your worship leaders from your fourth week of the month Sundays, the Burnses are here, and they're going to give you a Bible story. So uh, right over here, and I think they got some guests with them. And we'll start out with, the blacksmith is coming. He should be here any time between 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. So we might as well sing some songs while we wait. The blacksmith, why is he coming? You know why. He's coming to trim your hooves and fix your horseshoes. I don't want my hooves trimmed today. Just let my hooves alone. Yeah, and I don't want my hooves trimmed today either. You know that when I don't want my hooves trimmed, I become nasty. I might just kick the blacksmith's toolbox and splatter his tools all over the barn. And if he bends down to pick up my hoof, I might bite his ear. Oh, it sounds that you horses are being disrespectful to us who love you and want to take care of you. Huh. It looks like you horses need to hear a story from the Bible so that you learn to obey the people who love you and take good care of you. Well, if you want us to be nice to the blacksmith, You'll have to bribe us with that scrumptious alfalfa that the rich racehorses get to eat. Now, you horses just settle down. Open your ears, okay, and listen to a story about a man and his donkey. Donkey? Why do we want to hear a story about a donkey? We're sophisticated horses. Well, we'll see how sophisticated you are when we finish the story. Long ago, the Israelites, God's chosen people, were camped by the land of the king of Moab. Now, the king of Moab did not want them there because he thought that they might curse or cause trouble to his kingdom. He didn't, he didn't know what to do, so what he did, he decided to hire a man to curse the Israelites so they would go away. The man's name was Balaam. Balaam told the king that it was impossible to curse a people that were blessed by God. The king insisted that ba Balaam cursed the Israelites and promised riches to Balaam if he would do the job. Balaam knew what was right, but tried to finagle God to maybe tell him differently. So he decided to get on his donkey and go with the king's men. God then became angry with Balaam and sent an invisible angel on the road to the king to kill Balaam. Aha! Balaam's donkey could see the invisible angel that was carrying a deadly sword. So she did what any donkey would do. She ran into the field, right off the road. So Balaam got angry with his donkey and whipped his donkey back to the road. Balaam whipped his donkey? Why, that's animal abuse. How dare that Balaam be so mean? Then the invisible angel of the Lord stood on the road between two walls. Balaam's donkey had nowhere to go. So she ran into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot. Good. B 
Balaam got what he deserved. And Balaam whipped his donkey again. Whipped her again? That Balaam is a monster. Then the angel of the Lord moved down the road to block even a narrower place in the road. Balaam's donkey had nowhere to go this time, so she laid down on the road. Balaam was re really angry then and whipped his donkey the third time. Whipped her again? Balaam needs to be arrested for animal abuse. Where's the animal cops when we need them? Then the Lord caused Balaam's donkey to speak real words. Balaam's donkey said, Why are you whipping me? I have been a good donkey to you all my life. Balaam said, You made me look like a fool to the king's men. Why, I have a nerve too. Just then, God opened Balaam's eyes to see the invisible angel standing on the road with his drawn sword. Balaam fell flat on the ground before the angel. Good. It's about time Balaam gets humbled. The angel demanded to Balaam, Why did you whip your donkey three times? I have come to stop you because you are headed down the road to destruction. Three times your donkey saw me and shied away from me. Otherwise, I would have certainly killed you and let your donkey live. Wow. We're so glad that the angel of the Lord is an animal cop, too. Balaam confessed that he had sinned. And afterward, Balaam told the king, Look, king, the Lord God of all had blessed the Israelites, and no curse could ever work on what the Lord had blessed. So, folks, the moral of the story is disobedience will never work especially when you know what is the right thing to do. Well, okay. I guess we are sorry that we wanted to be nasty to the blacksmith when he only wants our hooves to be healthy. So we guess we won't be getting that alfalfa that the rich racehorses get, will we? But if we are obedient for the blacksmith, could we maybe get some carrots? Well... How about if we sing a song about obedience to remind us of the, that we don't want to ever be nasty or disobedient to others? Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands, doing it happily. Action is the key, do it immediately, joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Can you spell it? O-B-E-D-I-E-N-C-E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands, doing it happily. Action is the key, do it immediately, joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you folks, you always want to do your very best when it comes to obedience, especially obeying Jesus 
who is your Lord and Savior. So, folks, let's all sing because we always want to do our best. Let's sing, I'll do my best. And I know you know this song really well. So I'm going to listen and I want to hear you. bless you little kids and the medium kids and the big kids and the young kids and the old kids and the older older kids and I want you to remember that we love you yes we do and Jesus loves you so much don't ever forget that every single day when you wake up in the morning you know that you have a loving Father, that Jesus loves you. And I want you to know this. Jesus says in John chapter 14, verse 21, and you can look it up if you have a Bible at, at home, the one who obeys me is the one who loves me. And because he loves me, my father will love him too. And I will too. And I will reveal myself to you. Alleluia. I guess it's here, ready to get the... Here comes... I see it. Yep, here the comes blacksmith's the blacksmith. Coming. He's coming. He's coming. I'm glad we got some songs to sing. Are you ready? We're ready for the blacksmith. Are you ready for the blacksmith? We hope you are. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.